person he's so humble the person is always there for me like he's humble me he takes care of me like must I reject this person just because it's not from my country hello guys welcome and welcome back to the channel it's a girl Sarah here again so today guys I'm back with another video so today's video is kind of like a story time type of so today's story it's about like how long it took me to marry my South African husband so I'm still getting used to calling my boyfriend husband because I'm still new in the situation guys so yeah so before going further with the video if it's the first time watching my video welcome to the channel now, please don't forget to subscribe like and comment and if you are returning to my channel welcome back and thank you so much for your support thank you so much for being there so without wasting your time guys let's go to the video so how long it took me to marry my south african husband so first of all i am a congolese i'm born in congo raised half in congo and the rest of my life here in south africa so i came in south africa when i was like super super young guys i came here when i was very young so I started everything in my life here in South Africa so my first everything in life I did it here in South Africa so it's a bit of that and first of all before marrying my husband my South African husband I was engaged before to a Congolese a guy so I used to stay in Wheatbank. My parents stays in Wheatbank and I live in Johannesburg. So when I was staying in Wheat in Wheatbank with my parents, I was engaged with a Congolese man. Everything was great, everything was like going smoothly, just that you know if that thing was not meant for you, it was not meant to happen. It will never happen that's why it's one thing that I have learned in life is that there are some things that happen in our life to teach us a lesson some things we have to say thank you even if it hurts you in the moment but it's for a reason why God didn't allow it to happen because now I see that why God didn't allow that to happen first I was going to get married just for people to know that I'm married, just for the sake of the name, for the sake of the, you know, he's this, he's that. But I was not really mature to be in a marriage, that's what I can say. So God like sold that in advance and he didn't want me to go in a marriage immature. He didn't want me to go in a marriage not even knowing what I'm going to do there so not back then when my engagement didn't work out with the congolese men that i was engaged before i'm not gonna say i was 100 percent happy that it didn't work out but i was kind of sad even though uh when i was like getting ready to get married and arranging everything i was not like 100 percent into the situation like going into marriage i was not really 100 percent into that even the person that i was about to marry saw it and he told me it's like you're not really into this and all that and some other situations that we were going through also happens that we didn't get married even though when the situation happened when like we broke up i was kind of sad and relieve at the same time i was a bit sad because everybody knew that i'm about to get married and people were like asking for invitations they want to come to the party type of a thing you know and on top of that in a black family congolese family when you introduce someone to your parents like you don't want to be introducing people over and over and over again you want the person that you introduce must be the person who's gonna marry you the person who's gonna like be that person so that was also me as well the person that i introduced to my family i was just ready to get married to the person because i already introduced this person to my family so like breaking up bringing another person that will be another long story so i didn't want that to happen to me so it happened when i was in wheat bank and when the situation happened when we broke up I was sad, I was still like continuing with my studies and then I decided to leave Wheatbank and come in Johannesburg. So when I came in Johannesburg guys, it took me five years for me to meet my husband today. So like I'm from a Christian family to a pastor's house and 
my life is just like christian god and god only which is super super great so i grew up knowing that i can't just play with my body i can't just play with my life my body's a temple so i didn't want to play around so i told my i told myself that i'm not gonna play around i'm not gonna like use my body the next person that i'm going to introduce to my family that will be the person that i'm like comfortable with that will be the person that i'm like this is the one like you know so everything was good after my five years after three years staying in the pastor's house i moved out now i started staying by myself the two years i stayed by myself i was like a good girl guys i was a good girl even though i was staying by myself people were like just talking you know in a congolese uh, community it's very rare to see a woman staying by themselves it's only here in south africa that it became popular women staying by themselves but back home parents don't allow that at all you know parents don't allow that it's only parents who are here in south africa are now allowing their kids to stay by themselves so i started staying by myself two years and people are like kind of like talking she's staying by herself because she wants to be free she wants to do this this and that she wants to do whatsoever that she wants to do you know those type of things but one thing people didn't know that even though i'm staying by myself staying by yourself does not mean that you are going to do all those crazy things that you hear people doing outside i'm from a christian family so i have a face a very strong face that it's not gonna shake me now like things is not gonna shake me outside like i was already strong like god was like in my life you know so i ended up meeting my husband the one who's my husband today so when we met it was just like you know getting to know each other just to talk and laugh because the first time when we met the conversation was like so smooth you know do you ever met someone where by first time you meet them you guys have a great conversation like you met for like forever that's what happened with my south african husband today so the first time when we met guys the conversation was great we were just laughing and it was just so great and at the end of the conversation we just said like we're talking and laughing like we knew each other for like forever so that was a, a good thing already on my side and his side as well then we started dating for quite some time guys and i didn't introduce him to my family at all and he didn't also introduce me to his family at all so it was just like the two of us getting to know each other and being around each other so i already knew in my life i already knew that the person that i'm going to introduce to my family that will be the person that i'm going to marry because we don't play like bringing people to our family over and over and over even the family the parents will be like are you like playing out there or something so i dated my husband for like two years and some months guys two years and some months and the thing is from the get-go i told my husband today that i want this i want that i'm not here to play i'm ready for this, this and that like i want a family i want to be like honored and stuff like that so it's very important when you want to get into a relationship it's very very important to tell the person that you want what you want and what you don't want you know for the person to know that if they are willing to go into that relationship with the things that you want or not because uh, so many times especially as female we go into relationship just because you want so many things but you don't want to say it because you are afraid that if i say it the person's not going to be there stuff like that but that's even the point like you have to say it so that you may know where you stand if the person's still gonna be there or not so from the get-go i told him already that i want this this and that i don't want to play because you know i explained to him because i knew already that like i said i'm from a christian family a lot of things that we are not going to do like we're not going to do so many things because i'm not used to it i don't do it you know so if you want quite a few things you have to be you have to do right to my family like you have to do right so i told him that and when we started dating and i can see the person he's like straight he's so serious he's humble 
he's always there and another thing also i'm the problem i can say i started like kind of feeling a little bit hesitant because the person that i'm dating he's a south african and i am a Congolese, so i was like asking myself how is this gonna work like i've never seen a Congolese marrying a south african i've never heard i know they do but it's very very rare Congolese men do marry south african women but a Congolese woman marrying a south african man that's super super rare like it's very rare so it was also like i was asking myself like how is it gonna work like community parents like are they going to accept that all those type of things because no one in my family ever married someone who's not a Congolese so I was just asking myself all those questions and all that so after two years of dating my husband then I'm like no now we have to make things right I came to my senses and I'm like I started just thinking back you know back on the days and people I dated and all that I I came to realization that I'm like I dated Congolese guys but no one married me you know no one was there for me no one respected me the way I wanted to be respected no one did whatsoever that I wanted and not that they were bad people or they were wrong just that they were not for me you know they were not for me that's why those things didn't happen and now i'm dating a south african man the person he's so humble the person is always there for me like he's 100 percent there for me he takes care of me like must i reject this person just because it's not from my country just because it's not from my culture i was just like thinking about it and i'm like i'm gonna lose my blessing just for this thing so yeah guys and then i'm like you know what i'm going to marry the person who's always there for me who respects me who fears God like that was like my number one because you know as a Christian as a woman it feels good like it feels you feel happy when you have a partner that you do everything and you go to church together for me that's like number one like that's that's the first thing that i look into a man whenever i'm dating if I'm, i want to date a person when i used to date guys because you know so back in the days when before dating someone i was always like checking all those type of things like asking where do you attend church stuff like that i just want to see myself like is this person i'll be able to go to church with this person i don't want to marry someone who's like he doesn't go to church and then he's like I don't, he doesn't even believe in god he's just leaving jail like i don't know what we are going to teach to our kids if i'm married to someone who's like that you know so I wanted someone who would be like same belief with me, someone that I can go to church with. So I just, that I was just checking all those things. I'm like, the person I'm dating right now, we go to church together. He respects me. He takes care of me. He's always there for me. He's humble. Like, he's just the person, like, everything that I want, he got it. So why am I like kidding myself not giving him a chance to do the right thing and on top of that he wants to do the right thing so why should i stop someone like that just because it's not from my country just because it's not from my culture i'm going to lose my blessing just for that and then i decided guys after two years and some months guys we decided to make things right with the family and it happened so quick and he was so ready because he also didn't want to lose the person that he got you know what i'm saying so i also didn't want to lose the person that i got because we just like for each other so yeah guys that was a bit of that that's what happened and that's how long it took me to like marry my husband today my south african husband so yeah guys that's a bit of that and my advice that i would like to give to someone out there who's like in the same situation with me because i know a lot of people who are in the same situation that i've been through 
is that go for what you believe in go for what you want like don't look at what people would say because i was like it took me quite some time for me to allow my husband to go see my parents because i was always thinking what is the community going to say what um the people are going to say like are they going to gossip about me because i'm marrying someone who's not from my culture all those type of things but as long as what you have as long as i'm happy as long as i know that this is the person for me this is the person that's gonna make me happy marrying someone from your culture from your country that does not mean that you are going to be happy in life if the person who is meant for you is not from your culture so you're going to lose your blessing just because of that so go for the person that you feel is good for you if the person is from your country go for the person who's from your country and if the person is not from your country go for that person that you love i know there are a lot of stories out there that can scare you from not going for the person that you love but one thing i would like to say is that don't generalize the situation i can go through a bad experience for an example like i'm dating someone who's not from my culture and this person did this this and that to me that was me going with the wrong person that does not mean that the person that you are going to go with will be the wrong person will be the same person that i went through with no it's not the same there are so many stories out there whereby a congolese man did this to a woman the congolese man did this to a whatever woman that does not mean that all congolese will do the same thing to you that does not mean that all south african will do the same thing to you we have a lot of stories that we hear marrying south african men they are this this and that the south african men will do this this and that to you if you marry a congolese man he will do this this and that to you they are like this they are like that if you marry a nigerian man they are like this they are like that to that you know there are so many stories out there because each and every person will bring their experience what they've been through and all that but one thing people don't understand is that that's not you that them just yes you can't like take away or like just throw away all other people's experiences yes listen to that but don't like lose your blessing because of other people's experiences just be clever just like you know take notes then you will know what to do in your relationship you know what to do to make your relationship better for all those type of things not to happen to you so yeah guys that was a little thing that i wanted to share with you guys today and how long it took me to marry my south african husband today and yeah guys so that was a few things i wanted to share with you guys today if you have any question please don't forget to leave it on the comment down below i will definitely definitely answer your questions so yeah guys so i will see you on my next video